Good morning, still in Nottinghamshire. I'm still here with Adam um, and we're doing a little explore today, we're filming three videos. The first fled Bristation, which is um, behind us now, um, was part one. This video, we're going to be having a look, we're going to be having a walk over the Fledborough viaduct. And uh, this is the track bed, just leading up to the viaduct. So we'll tell you all about a little bit more about the viaduct once we get up there. Just on the right hand side of the track bed, we'll be walking down. That's the site down there, um, looking over the old uh, High Mine and Power Station, which is now demolished, but you can still see on the aerial maps, if you look on Google Maps, etc., you can still see the shapes of the cooling towers. You see the viaduct. Um, it's just coming into view between the foliage just in front there but before we get onto the viaduct we've got this which I believe in some form is a isn't an original I believe I don't know if that's the case for for all of it or not I, I could be completely wrong never never trust what you were uh, what you read on Facebook all the time so start of the viaduct I'm eager to to get on top I think we're just gonna have a look down inside here there was a gentleman just went down here a minute ago I was wondering where this where this came there's some posts here on the side and two more posts I think these are things are just fence posts um, we're right on the side of the viaduct now. Bringing you down. The world's uh, slippiest path. <laughs> this reminds me of, with the shallowness of it, the uh, the Weston viaduct on the uh, on the Great Central, south of Leicester. It's gonna be old gatepost underneath, underneath the arch. Wow. So it's the, the flood bank. It's on the outside of the of the power station, but look at that. Look at the viaduct there, just sneaking off round to the right. The viaduct opened in 1897, built by the Lancashire, Derbyshire and East Coast Railway. It's more commonly known these days as Fledborough Viaduct, but older maps has it labelled as Trent Viaduct. Oh, keen to get on, we're just having a, having a look round while we've got the opportunity. Bit of drainage, just coming. Coming down there. And this side, it is snaking away from us, but it's, it's in the, this is a, the shady side of the viaduct at this time of day. But nice, silhouette, isn't it? This with the sun behind. Just before we do get up on top of the viaduct, just having a little look around at some of the architecture we can get a good because of the, the shallowness and the the fact that we're on this little flood banking we can see look we can see the uh like buttress tops if buttress is the right word for those i don't know and the different layers layers of bricks and that five bricks wide on the archways it's a very warm day for early october very muggy. Um, visions of me doing quite a lot of drone work. One, two, three, uh, three sets of power lines um, crisscrossing 
the viaduct by the looks of things. So I'll try and get the drone up, but obviously I'll do it in a responsible, responsible way. So we're walking along, as you can guess, walking along that first, first half of the arches now. Just did a lot of ballast down on this line that we've been seeing. Let's just put the camera through the fence, get a view over the side. You can see the curve on the viaduct, can't you there? And this first section going over this uh, flood. I suppose they'd be flood plains at certain times, wouldn't they? So just some stats then. Um, now we're on top of the viaduct. 59 brick arches in two sections, either side of the River Trent. And in the middle, we had four trussel steel girder spans that we'll get up to that cross um, over where the river is. Quite a lengthy one, this one. Um, in new money, um, 814 meters. So not far off a kilometer that. Um, for anyone who's European who does a little bit of running. Um, in old money, 890 yards. Now, I have seen a few different variations of this number, um, but supposedly 9 million bricks went uh, into the construction of this, this viaduct. I don't know how accurate that number is, but that's a staggeringly mind-blowing number, isn't it? Back there, I found another one. There's stuff to yeah. Has it got a message on the back or anything? No. There's one on that other post further back, like that. Don't know what it's for. Now, this railway line, obviously, this is the Lancashire, Derbyshire, and East Coast Railway originally that ran. Uh, ran as far as Lincoln, we'll say from Chesterfield, Chesterfield Marketplace, or from Baton Junction, coming the other way, uh, from down the Baton branch. Um, so passenger service has ceased, the regular passenger service has ceased in the 1950s, but it was a big area for coal. We had, I mean, we had the power station just behind us here, collieries are plenty, a lot of power stations up and down the Trent, and uh, this kept freight service until 1980 and apparently um, if what I'm reading is correct on the internet it was only a derailment at Clifton the other side of the viaduct that caused the line to be closed yeah is it a, a signal base possibly yes yeah, but I thought yeah. an example of some of the drainage that they've built into the viaduct and the reinforced concrete look I hope it's not made of that rack stuff Adam I mean it's not I mean, it's a very flat landscape isn't it um, but you see for miles you see um, closest to us there the cotton power station uh, and then in the very distance, if you can see, the two sets of towers for West Burton power stations. And, uh, of course, originally, because we're on the side of the River Trent, like you find with the River... Is it the River Ooze or the River Air? The ones along the M62 corridor power stations. Um, they built them near major rivers like this because there was a plentiful supply of water. And don't forget, the River Trent here is navigable as well. Uh, we're coming up to the steel, uh, the girder section in the middle now that crosses over the River Trent. So it's quite a, an, an important link that they've managed to reopen this up. Yeah. I was shocked to read that the next way of getting over the Trent, and that's via foot, by rail, or by road, is, uh, is in Newark, uh, which is uh, some distance in that way. Uh, where the A1 crosses uh, the Trent. So there's not a, we've got Torxy Viaduct to the north, uh, Dunham Bridge not too far up that way, toll, little toll bridge, uh, and then onwards towards Gainsborough. But there's not, there's not a massive amount of options to get over the, the, uh, the River Trent. It's quite a detour, quite a detour around. So it's, it's quite an important link that they've opened here. So I'd say we're getting to about the halfway stage now. And look, we've got a 
uh, parapet joining us on both sides. Uh, and we're about to uh, just go over the, the steel section on the middle that crosses over the River Trent. Oh yeah, get a view down the side here. There's a lot of steel there, isn't there? Look at the size of those, those piers in the water. Oh, a couple of sheep down there. And that's the River Trent, looking south, looking towards Newark, uh, Nottingham. View down this side, the shady side. Not great views off the uh, this central section, is there? Yeah, not really. He's trying to get up. Yeah, you can have a better view. Up there. <laughs> it's quite a, quite a reach over, even for me. That trains made some noise going over this section with echo. Yeah, I bet they did, didn't they? Mm. This, this bit here isn't. I'm, I know that they did replace this. I can't remember the. I can't remember the dates when they replaced this, but I think they put this back a single track. There's not double track over here, mm. is there? A little viewpoint. Looking out over the Trent there. See this? There's a little. Um, one here just explaining about the uh, the artwork. Um, now I think you can tell that there's there's genuine artwork that's that's been put up here to try and brighten up the viaduct, like that dragonfly there, horse, etc. But I, I think there's yeah there's two different types of uh, artwork on here. There's the unsavoury type as well that I think someone's come in and added at a, a later date isn't there some very disturbing graffiti I won't show you some of the worst of it for uh, fear of someone taking offence and reporting me to YouTube but hmm. some disturbing messages and political messages etc And that's the end of the steel section, so we're on back onto uh, a brick, another brick arch section on the eastern side. Not as long though, you can uh, visibly tell, it's not as long as on the, on the western side. Somebody's dropped their glasses, oh. put them on the side. I don't know, they're in good condition. If anyone's lost uh, any... Any glasses falling out of your bag or whatever? That's where they are. That was some journey over there, wasn't it? Quite a quite a length. But we are now approaching the end now. That's spitting us out on um, on the east bank of the Trent. There's some fencing coming up as well. Post a sign on it one time. Whoops, yep, yeah. old railway sleeper down there that being repurposed. Just showing up the banking, isn't it? There, something on concrete support, something on that side. Look, 
another one of those concrete posts there just uh, a couple of yards away oh right yeah i'm stood right on top of one yeah. one two i wonder what they were for i wonder if they used to be like a fencing extended fencing i think so possibly yeah, yeah. It has been cut off, look, you can see how it's been sawn off. There's this uh, um, tensioner just down there. A bit too far away for you to see, though, I think. But... So we'll leave that episode there, Fledbrook Viaduct. Just disappearing off behind us. Um, we'll catch you on the third part of today's series of videos. We're we'll going to have a look around um, some of the stuff on the trap bed from here and the, uh, the old Clifton-on-Trent station site that we walked through. So uh, we'll see you on the next one.